Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I hope you all enjoy my take on Cole Anthony as an overall prospect and as an investment in the card market. Um, for a chance to win, just leave a comment below and be a subscriber, and the winner will receive all three cards pictured here. It's going to be a green prism of Cole Anthony, a pink cracked ice Cole Anthony rookie card, as well as a crusade green prism as well. So if you do like the video, like the video. What's up, Hoop fans? This is Gary with Hobby Lottery, and today we've got an episode of Let's Talk Cards. Today's player of discussion is Cole Anthony, the 15th overall draft pick by the Orlando Magic. The 6'2 inch point guard is currently averaging 11 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists per game while shooting 38% from the field and 33% from 3 point. Compared to other rookies in this year's class, he ranks 5th in scoring, 7th in rebounds, and is 3rd in assists behind just LaMelo Ball and Tyrese Halliburton. He's also the only rookie to call game by hitting a walk-off buzzer beater against the Minnesota Timberwolves, and if you ask me, he's filling in quite nicely in the tragic absence of Markel Fultz. Which brings me to the first of my four legacy points I want to get into and that's opportunity now before i get into talking about opportunity i do want to explain what i mean when i say these legacy points so in my personal opinion i think a career i think a player's career could ultimately ultimately be decided by these four things one is opportunity if they get playing time and actually get a chance to showcase their talent two is their skill set and fit for the nba three is a mamba mentality if they're actually confident and they actually want to be good and then four is injury history or injuries so with that being said let's go ahead and talk about cole's opportunity with that being said, it's a cold world in Orlando right now with literally every ball handler on the roster being injured. Markel Fultz, as we all know, is out for the season, tore his ACL. Michael Carter-Williams has no timetable for return currently. And then Aaron Gordon, who was actually running point forward and was handling a lot of the ball handling duties, is actually out four to six, week, four to six weeks right now with a severe left ankle sprain. Jordan Bone simply doesn't seem like he's cut out for the NBA. And then it's gotten so desperate for Orlando that they've actually had to call Frank Mason up in the G League to play backup point just to get somebody else out there who can simply dribble the basketball. Uh, but with that being said, especially with Aaron Gordon going down, uh, um, it's, Cole Anthony has actually seen an increase in minutes as he started off the season averaging roughly 17 a game. He was getting about 23 a game once Markel went out, once Michael Carter-Williams went out. He's been pretty steadily averaging about 30 to 31 minutes per game. And as it stands at this moment, I think he actually leads all rookies in minutes per game at this time. Now, I do look for him to have a bump in assist, uh, definitely with all the more ball handling duties that he's experiencing. And as a matter of fact, he's actually had a career high nine assists against the Bulls uh, just the other night. But I don't see the magic giving up on him the same way they did Mo Bamba, but things might get awkward next year when Markel Fultz does return. They might actually run Cole Anthony as a two card and Markel as a point, depending on what they may decide to do with Evan Fournier going forward. He's been in trade rumors. They may not re-sign him back, but it's going to get very awkward, as I stated, because if Markel doesn't come back balling like he was doing this season, there's a very good chance that Cole Anthony could hold down the starting role and they might bring Markel off the bench. But if Markel does come back and he recovers very nicely from this injury, Cole will be a solid six man going forward. So with all this opportunity that Cole's getting to showcase his skills, that brings me to the second of my four legacy points, and that is skill set and fit. And he is exactly what the Magic need as a fit in terms of playmaking, being a playmaking scoring guard, but also what is most popular and what is most sought after in the NBA now um, is just a playmaking scoring guard. Wing defenders and two-way defenders are important as well. And then you also want to have a good point guard. Now, I know he's criticizing college as a bad shot taker, but as a pro to me, he seems pretty polished and actually... Um, very patient when he's running the offense. Uh, he runs the pick and roll nicely uh, with Nikola Vucevic as well as Kim Birch. Uh, he doesn't have a burst in speed. He's not a very quick guard. Uh, and I think a lot of that is due to the injuries, which I'm going to get into next. But Vooch and Kim Birch are actually two solid bigs for him that really will open up his game. The solid screen setting they do, and not only to that, Vucevic has the ability to stretch out to the three-point line and knock that down. Kind of opens up the lane a little more for Cole to do his thing. Now, he's pretty good. Uh, he hits the mid-range jumper, 
pretty good. He's not good at getting all the way to the basket, but he has a very good floater game. He's got a little Tony Parker touch when it comes to actually getting that ball high in the air over the defender and letting it drop down for the swish there. Now, his field goal percentage is not where you want it to be. I think it's more so due to him missing open jumpers, and I think that'll actually be corrected over time. Matter of fact, since the Aaron Gordon injury, he's actually been shooting close to 45% from the field um, over the last about five games or so, which is a big step up from the percentages I mentioned earlier. Now, unfortunately, his style of play doesn't result in many free throws, which is bad for him because he shoots 84% from the free throw line. Is actually third amongst rookies in free throw percentage at the time of this recording. He only averages 2.4 attempts per game, though. So if he could master, which as much as I hate this, the fishing for fouls or like pump faking and jumping into the defender, how Luka, James Harden does, or even Trey Young for that matter, if he's able to draw some of those loose fouls that are just... They stop the play and slow down the game. He can get to the foul line. That would be great for his game, and you could definitely see his points per game go up there. And the third legacy point I want to talk about is Mamba mentality, a.k.a. just the player's overall confidence level and his aggression level when he's on the basketball court. And the other night, he showed some great focus when making some game-clinching free throws against the Chicago Bulls, just stepping up and knocking them both down in a key moment. Over the last few games, too, he's actually been hitting mid-range jumpers off behind-the-back crossovers, and he's got a little more swag to his, his game when it turns to how he crosses over and handles the ball. It's just more polished and less robotic, which that may seem like just something that doesn't matter, but when you look at Jordan Bone, for example, the other guard that Magic recently signed earlier, he just seems so plain Jane. There's no real moves, nothing to keep the defense guessing at all. And to me, I think you have to have a certain level of swag and confidence about you to be crossing over like the way Steph Curry does or Dame Lillard or Harden, and then you pull up and you knock jumpers down. It just shows your overall comfort level with the game. It's, you're playing as if you're not afraid to mess up. You get a little loose with the ball and you show some craftiness out there. Now, he does, I stated this earlier, I believe, but he is only averaging two turnovers per game while averaging over 30 minutes per game really over like the last 10 to 15 games which is excellent for a point guard rookie and especially considering there's literally no other person to handle the rock on the magic right now where he can actually give it up to someone to take the burden off he's basically just shouldering the burden by himself um, and he's also a great rebounding guard as I talked about when he hit that walk off three against the Timberwolves that was off of a rebound that he grabbed actually and just dribbled up the court launched it falling out of bounds swished through the net and they won the game and fun fact Cole Anthony is currently averaging more rebounds than Patrick Williams on the Chicago Bulls um, on the rookie leaderboard and Pat is far more athletic than him and actually I think 6'7 or 6'8 and Cole gets more boards than him so with that being said, just going after the ball, his ability to, his focus to take big shots and make them and step up to the line and, and make key free throws, I think he is very confident, unlike his teammate Mo Bamba. Now the fourth and final legacy point that I think determines a player's career and overall can impact their card prices, that's going to be injury. And this is some cause for concern for Cole because while I was explaining earlier how he uses the Florida game really well, I think it's more so to his inability to get all the way to the rim and finish. And I think these injuries have just affected his speed. Uh, I was unable to verify if he had an injury in high school uh, to his ankle or, or to his knee, I believe. And he also had an injury, of course, in college. And I was unable to verify if those were both the same knee or not. But the most recent one when he was in college was actually a partially torn meniscus he had. And he went, he underwent surgery on that. And he that actually caused his, his draft stock to fall quite a bit, um, him having that injury there. And if you look back too, to some of his old high school highlights when he was doing like between the leg dunks and jumping over guys, and he was he's, he's pretty awesome, very Derrick Rose-like, and I, I'm not sure if we'll really get that from him a lot. I hope and pray that he just doesn't get hurt again. There's actually a clip when he went down, um, he got hit in the forehead while driving to the basket in one of his North Carolina games, and he was bleeding, and the audio of it when he was on the ground he reached, he dragged his forehead, he realized there was blood on his hands, and he screamed out, why am I always getting hurt, explicitives, because he really does. I mean, for being only 20 and having some pretty significant injuries, I mean, I know a lot of athletes do, but for him to, to have that so soon and be in the position that he plays at point guard, um, I... That's, that, that sucks. That really does. I don't know if he'll really ever have the speed to beat a lot of NBA defenders, uh, but... 
go on ball his life uh, and check out some of those dunks that he did and just see how athletic he used to be and i know he did just have a good poster dunk on the raptors uh, the other night but yeah um, that's cause for concern when you're looking at his overall career trajectory and if you're also looking at him as an investment in sports cards and with that being said i do want to transition into talking about what his card prices currently are and what they could be in the future now before I get into how a player can be an investment and their card prices can be impacted by their overall legacy, I want to give these two disclaimers. So the first one is you always want to collect who you like. It's just always a plus when who you like happens to be worth money. So definitely enjoy the hobby and also keep in mind that a player does not have to be a superstar or a hall of famer in order for there to be money making opportunities. Now initially on these videos I have a list of players that I go through from different scouting reports who they thought a player could most resemble when they reach the NBA and I break them all down but as this video is getting a little lengthy I'm just gonna go ahead and, and just make this one a little quicker so over from NBA draft.com on um, NBA.com bleacher report as well as the painted lines they came up between all of them the list of players they thought Cole Anthony would most resemble in the NBA was CJ McCollum a high-flying Derek Fisher Jared Bayless, Shades of Kemba Walker, Ben Gordon, Baron Davis, Darren Williams, Gilbert Arenas, Colin Sexton, and Lou Williams were the list of players. So instead of comparing each and every one, which I did on a separate video, and it was like seven minutes long, that's too long to add to this one, but I am between... I want to add my own pick in here. I think floor level, Cole Anthony will be like Jameer Nelson, who's actually a very underrated small player, a very underrated undersized player. He was listed as six foot, but actually a lot of analysts say he was about 5'11". I played most of his career with the Orlando Magic, was a one-time all-star. Basketball reference, you can look at his career averages. It's not that good at like 11 points. You want to look at his prime, really, before the injuries. And he had multiple seasons where he averaged about 14 points, five assists, and two rebounds at his peak he was about 17.7 assists and three rebounds which is pretty good ceiling level i think cole anthony would be lou williams a potential 20 point per game score off the bench or in the starting lineup um i just think his skill set does kind of resemble both of those guys due to his injuries i don't think his defense will ever be superior so i can't really go with like colin sexton and um and like Derek Fisher, for example, and I don't think he's as athletic or well, he is athletic, but I just think the injuries may hold him back from being like Baron Davis type level where he had like a 40 inch vert. So I'm with Jameer Nelson floor, Lou Williams ceiling and Lou Williams would have been a multi-time all-star had he played in the Eastern Conference. I feel comfortable saying that averaging 20, 22 points per game off the bench for multiple seasons, he just didn't get a whole lot of love because he was in the West. But that's where I'm at. And eat we and you always so the best way to determine a player's value or their pulse of their card markets is you want to look at the silver prism rookie card and what that's going for. Obviously due to the pandemic the sets have been on hold so we only have NBA hoops and prism draft picks to go off of compared to other players in this year's draft class I must say I think he is underpriced at the moment I think he's he's even under Peyton Pritchard and a few others if you want to compare hoops comps and compare draft picks comps um, he's kind of like eighth on the list and he's probably gonna make all rookie he's gonna make all rookie second team for sure he may make all rookie first team at a guard position if he keeps his play up and getting so many minutes so yeah I see potentially a one-time all-star at least in his future definitely a high teen score per game potentially getting into the low 20s per game that's my take on Cole Anthony I think he'll be an undervalued player you can collect and invest in I personally love him you guys can let me know what you think down in the comments below but I do want to thank you all for watching everybody stay safe be blessed keep on collecting Thank you.